Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now a story broke this week that Intel is trying to get its hands on some RISC-V tech and it's prepared to pay up to two billion dollars for it. So what does that mean, eh? Well if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So recently Intel opened up its foundry business, its chip making business, to third parties offering industry standard tools. If you wanted to build ARM chips or build RISC-V chips, Intel says come to us, we'll give you a price and let's talk about it, we can make those chips for you. Now this week a new story broke that actually Intel wants to get into the RISC-V design business and it's prepared to pay up to two billion dollars for that. So what's actually happened? There is a RISC-V company called Sci-5, so RISC-V, Sci-5, and they have a very similar business model to companies like ARM. They design uh, RISC-V processors, and then you can take that CPU design and incorporate it into some other kind of chip. You maybe you want to build an SOC, maybe it's an embedded application, maybe it's something special that you're building. You take the design and you pay for it. There's a licensing agreement, what goes on, and that's how their business works. Now, of course, it's a much smaller business. It's much more in its infancy compared to the big names like ARM and NVIDIA and Qualcomm and all these other big companies, but it is working. They have a, a, a global business and it is working. Now, Intel has said, hey, Sci-5, can we buy you, please, for $2 billion? Now, the estimation at the moment is that Sci-5 is worth about $500 million. So it looks like Intel are prepared to pay four times the value. And this isn't a done deal at all because Sci-5 may want to remain independent. It may just be looking for investment. It may just be looking for uh, you know, someone to come in and support them. It's certainly not, the takeover is certainly not uh, the only option they have on the table. But the point is that Intel wanted to do it. Whether they actually succeed with Sci-5 in one sense is not important, but the point is that Intel wants to do it, which means that Intel is planning on getting into the RISC-V game. Now, it may do it by taking over Sci-5, it may do it by taking over some other RISC-V company, it may do it by starting its own RISC-V department, bringing engineers and starting its own thing, because $2 billion is a lot of money, you can do a lot with $2 billion. So why would Intel want to get into RISC-V? Well, the first answer from, of course, a broad industry uh, idea is that NVIDIA is in the process of buying ARM. Now, really, NVIDIA and Intel are strong rivals at the moment. Traditionally, we think of Intel and AMD as being rivals. But if you think about it, AMD does uh, x86 processors and it also does GPUs. Now, NVIDIA does the GPUs, but it doesn't do the x86 processors. So you've got this company that is actually a big GPU manufacturer and of course GPUs now are getting into the data center because we have you know machine learning going on, we have you know other things that are being done on servers and not only that Nvidia have also got into the kind of the infrastructure kind of business because they're starting to sell things like smart network cards, DPUs they're called. Therefore taking some of the load off from the processor, from the CPU, and putting it into other components. So you've kind of got this, all this stuff to do with network and memory and storage and all this stuff flying around. They've now got into that business. So the one thing they were missing, Nvidia was missing, was its own CPU business. Now AMD has got a CPU business and a graphics business. Now Nvidia has got uh, a, a GPU business, a graphics business, and it's got the infrastructure business. Now it was a CPU business, so it wants to buy ARM. That's one of the things it's, it's planning on doing, and that's currently going on. Now that's sent shock waves through the industry because other big ARM users are saying, well, once NVIDIA own ARM, are we going to be able to rely on the technology coming uh, from ARM? And the message from ARM, yes, of course you can. Business is normal. It's in our own interest to maintain, uh, you know, equality amongst all of our partners. Even if, uh, you know, we're owned by a different company, we'll treat everybody the same. And I think that's probably actually what's going to happen. But there are a lot of people that are nervous about this acquisition. So people are turning towards RISC-V. What can RISC-V do for us? Now I've got a whole set of videos on this channel about RISC-V. I won't go into the whole philosophy of RISC-V here and now, worth watching those videos. Just one thing to say, RISC-V does not mean open source hardware. Just because you design a chip using the RISC-V instructions, so it doesn't mean that chip is then gonna be free for anybody on the internet to use. That's not how it works. 
do go and watch those videos if you want to find out more. But of course, Intel is already in the data center. Intel already has its own uh, business for infrastructure. It has its own very successful server CPU business. It's got its own GPU business that's not maybe as well known as uh, you know Nvidia and AMD. So why on earth would it want Risk Five? Well, there are different areas that Risk Five could be important for Intel. Now, the first reason is microcontrollers. Now, we live in a kind of an Internet of Things world. If you think about it, not only your smartphone, but your digital camera and your virtual assistant, whether that's Google Assistant, whether that's Alexa. And we've also got smart central heating and smart switches. And, you know, just absolutely everything nowadays has got a microcontroller in it. So we're not just talking about your desktop PC. You've probably got many, many more microcontrollers in your house through all the different gadgets you've got than, you know, just the fact you happen to own a laptop or, or a smartphone. And Intel aren't in that business. Now, decades ago, it was in the microcontroller business with the 8051, and that's still popular today. There are companies making clones of it, but Intel itself is not in there. And it tried to get into the microcontroller market by making the Quark processor, which was basically uh, a Pentium chip from way back, clocked down sometimes to 30 something uh, megahertz and then used as a microcontroller. And that, that has not been anywhere near as successful as the other offerings from, from ARM, for example. So by going into RISC-V, it could start to eat away into this microcontroller market. And then if it combined that with other technology like the DSP stuff, like uh, the voice activation, you know, and the networking and all that, it could actually build on its other technologies, include RISC-V. So it's not an x86 processor, much more low power, much more uh, uh, slower performance, and then launch itself into the microcontroller market. That could be one reason that uh, Intel are looking at RISC-V. Just want to say at this point, if you are enjoying this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Now, I mentioned earlier the infrastructure market. This is kind of taking away all that data transport, all that data stuff that's going on, hard disks and networking and memory, all that stuff that goes on, because it's all about data nowadays. There's so much data flying around. If you can bring the processing of that data to a separate place, offload the power from the main CPU, then you can get more things done. So maybe Intel would like to boost its uh, infrastructure offerings by using RISC-V. And it said actually very, very recently that it is now going to launch a thing called the IPU, the Infrastructure Processing Unit, very similar to what NVIDIA has. Okay, and it hasn't told us many, many details about that. But in the future, if that was based on something like RISC-V, that could be a very lucrative business for Intel. So the CPU remains x86, but then the infrastructure part of it could turn to RISC-V. Since I mentioned their x86, I don't think in the short term Risk Five will be for Intel to make CPUs to go into laptops or desktops or even to smartphones. Of course, that could happen in the very long term, 15 years onwards. But if it was spending $2 billion now, it wants a return on that money now. And where is that money? The data center, first of all, IoT devices also, and all of the data that's flying around the place needs to be processed and it needs to be handled. And it could do that with Risk Five based processors. And of course, next to that, you've got the AI stuff, as I've kind of talked about, not only voice recognition, not only keyword recognition, but actual processing of data locally so that you can do image recognition and voice recognition and you can do all kinds of fancy stuff, much more local without it having to go all the way up onto the Internet and back again. And of course, they could start building, Intel could start building uh, AI technology based on the risk 5 too complicated to take the you know the current uh, i3 i5 you know microarchitecture and try and bring that down it didn't work with the quark to even take a very old architecture like the pentium so let's start again with the risk 5 add in all the ai goodness all the signal processing all of the filters and all the things you need to add in there to make it understand uh, you know what's going on around it and then release this kind of set of products that are enabled much, much more for, for machine learning. And in fact, Intel has a name for that. It's called the XPU vision, the XPU idea of the world. But the X means it's not, it could be a C, could be a G, could be an N for neural, could be an FPGA. And they're saying you don't have to just have one type of processing unit, CPU or a GPU. We can have any kinds of processing units. And Intel is saying it's going to create all kinds of 
uh, heterogeneous environments where there are different things, not just CPU and GPU, but expanding that out to a whole bunch of different things. And the first letter can be whatever it needs to be. Infrastructure processing unit is one they've already just talked about. And again, it could do that. All those special units could actually be based on RISC-V. Now, one final thing to note is that Intel is no stranger to technologies other than x86. It's been very, very successful in x86. But if you look at the history of Intel, there are actually some quite amazing processors and some big failures uh, in that area. So for example, you've got the i960. That was an interesting chip, a 32-bit RISC chip, okay? And if I remember rightly, the very first version of Windows NT in the lab, not released publicly, but the very first version of it booted up not on an x86 processor, because Windows NT became Windows 2000, and then what we have today, Windows 10, Windows 11 that's coming. Okay, that heritage, it was actually booted up first on an i960, because they wanted it at the time to be architecturally uh, independent. And there are other ones, you can you can look them up. And of course, the other big name one is the Itanium, where it tried to move to 64 bits without maintaining x86 32-bit compatibility. And, and that failed, but they pumped a lot of, Intel pumped a lot of money into those, into those projects. So Intel is not a just an x86 company, although that is where a big part of its name, brand, and money comes from. There's all these other things going on, and it could take RISC-V and use it in everything else where it, because it knows it can't use the x86 architecture because it's just not going to scale downwards to those things. And before I go, I just want to remind you, I do have a newsletter, Gary Explains newsletter, everything I do here on this channel, everything I've done over on Android Authority, once a month it comes out, anything interesting I found on the internet, go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, just the newsletter, and I think you'll like it. So what do we know? Intel has offered up to $2 billion to take over Sci-5. That deal may or may not go through. Sci-5 may decide that it wants to take investment in a different direction. It wants to remain independent. But regardless of whether that goes through or not, we know that Intel is shopping around for RISC-V technology. And it could use that RISC-V technology in basically all the areas where microprocessors and microcontrollers are used, including in IoT, including including inside the data center, including inside of any anything that needs machine learning, and Intel could move into those markets rapidly by using the RISC-V technology, and at the same time offer an alternative to the uh, NVIDIA slash ARM company that is in the process of being formed, and at the same time trying to get ahead of AMD as a, you know, in a kind of a global kind of business point of view. Okay, that's it. Tell me in the comments below what your thoughts are. Why do you think Intel is shopping around to buy some RISC-V technology? Okay, don't forget those videos I pointed out, four videos explaining about RISC-V, the philosophy, what it all means. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. That's it. I'll see you in the next one.